In this video, we're going to take a look at trigonometric functions in a couple special types of right triangles. And the two special right triangles, we have the 30-60-90 triangle, which is right up here, and we also have the 45-45-90 triangle. It turns out that the 30-60-90 triangle is always in the ratio of the side lengths are 1, 2, and the square root of 3. So we can use that to allow us to find the trigonometric uh, ratios and functions, um, sine, cosine, tangent, etc., uh, based on those measurements. Let's start with that and take a look at the sine to start with. So how do we remember the sine, cosine, and tangent? Well, we have our good old Sokotoa here. So, oops. Back when I can spell Soka Toa. Okay. And remember, this first piece is the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And finally, the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Now, it's important to know what the opposite and hypotenuse and those things are. So let's say that we're sitting in this 30 degree angle here and I want to know the opposite and the hypotenuse. Well the hypotenuse is always the same. It's the side that's across from the right angle. So in this case the hypotenuse is going to be 2. The opposite is the side that the angle is opening up to. So if we make our way out of the angle straight over here, this is going to be the opposite side. The adjacent one is the one that if I was standing in this angle, I could touch it, and it's not the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the one with 2 here, and the adjacent one then must be the square root of 3. That's all that's left. So, And we can also look at the reciprocal <coughs> functions, the secant, cosecant, and cotangent, and we'll do those after we get done with the sine, cosine, and tangent. So, let's see. Let's start with the 30 degree angle sitting right here. We'll take the sine of 30 degrees. Well, that's going to be the opposite, which is 1, over the hypotenuse, which is 2. So the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half. All right. How about the cosine? Cosine of 30 degrees. Well, it's going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we have the square root of 3 over 2. And then finally the tangent. And remember the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So if we have the opposite there coming out from the 30 degree angle is 1. And then the adjacent is the square root of 3. Ooh, we got a little trouble here. Remember that we can't leave a radical or a square root on the bottom in the denominator. So what I need to do is rationalize this denominator. So I need to multiply by the square root of 3 on the top and the bottom. If I simplify that, that's going to give me the square root of 3 over 3. Okay, so we've got the sine, cosine, and tangent of that 30 degree angle. Let's also look at the secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Now, how do we remember which goes with which? Well, if we can remember SC or that there's one co in each pair, that can help us to remember how they match up. So the sine goes with the cosecant, and the cosine goes with the secant, and the tangent goes with the cotangent. So either we can remember SC, notice the SC pair in each of these, or that there's one co in each pair, that can help us to remember how they go together. Then it's just a matter of taking the reciprocals. So the cosecant of 30 degrees is gonna be just the reciprocal of this one half right here. So one half, the reciprocal, would just be two over one or two. The secant of 30 degrees 
Well, that's going to be the flip of the cosine right here. And when I flip that, ooh, uh-oh, we end up with a radical in the denominator. That's square root of 3, so we've got to take care of that. Rationalizing my denominator, so we end up with 2 square root of 3 over 3. And finally, the cotangent of 30 degrees. Well, for this one, notice how if I flipped this one right here, took the reciprocal of this, I would end up with that square root in the denominator, and I don't want that. So if I go back to what I originally wrote here, ooh, we've got the square root in the bottom, so when I flip it, it's going to be on the top where I want it. Perfect. So I'm going to put the square root of 3, and that will be over 1, which is just going to be the square root of 3. Okay, so we have the six trigonometric functions for 30 degrees. Okay, we could do the same thing for 60 degrees. So I could go through and figure out those ratios. The sine, again, would be the opposite. In this case, the opposite is this square root of 3 over the hypotenuse. So it would be square root of 3 over 2. Let me just switch colors and write those down. We'll do at least a few of them here. So the sine of 60 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2, the opposite over the hypotenuse. Then the cosine of 60 is going to be equal to the adjacent, which in this case is 1 over the hypotenuse. And finally, we have the tangent of 60, which is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So we have the square root of 3 over 1, or just the square root of 3. So there are my values for 60 degrees. Now, let's take a look at this 45 degree triangle. On the 45 degree triangle, <clears throat> what we find is that the uh, side lengths are in the ratio of 1. So if these two sides have a length of 1, the hypotenuse has a length of the square root of 2. And the reason for that, we can find that if we just remember that these two are 1. Remember the Pythagorean theorem would allow us to find that side, and it would be the square root of 2 in terms of the length. So we can do the same thing, finding our trigonometric functions. We'll start with the sine of 45. And that's going to be, if we have 45, well, it's the same thing, either 45. So 1 over the opposite over the hypotenuse. So 1 over the square root of 2. Oops, I need to rationalize. So I have to multiply by the square root of 2 on the top and bottom. That's going to give me the square root of 2 over 2. So that's my sine of 45 degrees. The cosine of 45 degrees going to be awfully similar. We've got the adjacent, which is 1, over the hypotenuse. So we've got the same thing. So I'm just going to skip right over to here. Square root of 2 over 2. And finally, the tangent of 45 degrees is going to be equal to the opposite, which is 1, over the adjacent, which is also 1. So that'll just be 1. Okay. And again, if I wanted to, I could find the cosecant, secant, and cotangent just by doing those flips and taking advantage of a situation where the square root's on the bottom because when we flip it, it'll be on the top. Now, what you hopefully maybe notice here is that 30, 45, and 60 are some values that are going to come up when we start looking at the unit circle. So uh, pay attention to those, and if you can remember these special triangles, we can come up with the sine, cosine, and tangent for those and that's going to help us to build our unit circle. So keep that in mind as you continue taking a look at trigonometric functions. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math.